So I'm going to talk about the dozens of actions nationwide in the United States and also touch a little bit on internationally that have addressed the health impacts of wireless radiation and sought to add some protections. Um, children in schools is a really big focus right now in various uh, levels of government, also in PTAs as well as uh, teacher unions because children spend the majority of their times in the classroom and they're exposed to ever-increasing levels from laptops, tablets, uh, wireless networks, as well as the antennas, which are placed on schools, in front of schools, and, and of course more will come with 5G. So what I have there is a slide from the United Educators, that's a slide I made, but it's about the United Educators of San Francisco, which passed a resolution this year now that the California Department of Health uh, issued an advisory on how to reduce cell phone radiation, they ha are now putting on their agenda to discuss the development of best practices for wireless devices in San Francisco schools, informing students and parents through the handbook about how to reduce exposure, posting that in every classroom and encouraging the use of Ethernet, meaning wired, not wireless, networks in the classroom. And this is an action that many private schools in the United States and actually entire countries are already doing. I presented a webinar last month with Dr. Cindy Russell of Physicians for Safe Technology. You can go to the Environmental Health website and actually watch that. Um, it's a great resource and on that web page are a lot of the the documents that we have here. So um, there's so much to say about what's happening in the United States. I'm just going to touch on a few things. The picture you see is lawyer Jimmy Gonzalez. He um, spearheaded the Pembroke Pines proclamation on cell phone radiation. And uh, you can watch his testimony where he talks about the brain cancer he developed where he held the phone to his head the cancer he developed in his chest area, the tumors, where he put the phone in his suit pocket, and in his hand, the hand that held uh, the phone that he used a lot. I'm an attorney. From 2001 to 2011, I used to use cell phones a lot more than just 30 minutes a day. I always held it in my left hand, up against my left ear, and I carried them around in my suit jacket's inner pockets. Lo and behold, if you were standing close to me, you'd see that there's a scar on my left hand, the result of nerve tumor removal surgery. If you can see the scar on the left side of my head, that's the result of brain cancer surgery on August 23rd, 2011. That's glioblastoma multiform level four. On top of that, I have an MRI that shows a tumor at my aortic bifurcation, right where my cell phone sat in my suit jackets. So that's one, two, three results of having a cell phone against my body. There are actually several other proclamations, which is sort of an, an easy start. You, you go to your city council and you ask for a proclamation to inform people that cell phone radiation exists. Here's how you can reduce exposure. Children are more vulnerable. Please go to Environmental Health Trust online to read more about those proclamations. There's a long history of state bills because we have to do more than just inform. Uh, industry and manufacturers have to label the, the phones. Now, there are many countries that are already doing this. They've passed laws that are already labeling, saying the phone emits radiation, um, and they have the different SAR levels. In Maine, there was the Wireless Information Act and actually several renditions of bills put forward. Um, the Maine's bill actually, uh, actually passed the Senate and House and then failed to pass the second vote as leadership switched votes in the final hour for the second reading after lobbyists descended on the Capitol. Um, and across the country, there are, of course, bills to put a moratorium on smart meters as well as to have a no-cost opt-out, which is so important. Uh, we can't seem to pass that in, in my state of Maryland, but we're working on it. Um, the public health departments of Connecticut and California have issued advisories on how to reduce exposure, and municipalities like Greenbelt and Burlingame post advice on their municipal websites. There are also proclamations on electromagnetic sensitivity 
going back to 2009. Um, so, San Francisco, as was discussed earlier, passed an ordinance back in 2010 and did two things. At the point of sale, retailers had to inform the customer that the cell phone emitted radiation, and there's an image from one of their posters and on the Environmental Health Trust website, we have all their posters, their fact sheets, information that would be handed to you as you bought the phone that you could see, uh, as well as information on their website about how to reduce exposure to cell phone radiation and for about healthy living. The wireless industry, of course, immediately sued, and as was mentioned, Brendan Carr, who's now an FCC commissioner, was a lead lawyer working on suing uh, San Francisco, saying you know, that it was violating their free speech rights. And San Francisco was not able to implement this law, although they still have the information on their website. Berkeley, this is the Berkeley cell phone ordinance, which was passed in 2015. If you carry or use your phone in a pants or shirt pocket or tucked into a bra when the phone is on and connected to a wireless network, you may exceed the federal guidelines for exposure to radio frequency radiation. This is, of course, true as the French tests show that when the phones are tested against the body, they can exceed our, our limits. Um, and then this potential risk is greater for children was actually part of the original ordinance, and it got uh, taken out as the litigation ensued because, of course, they were immediately sued by the CTIA, the wireless industry, as well. But this is just factual information. And in all of our phones and devices, we have a fine print warning. There are uh, 21 legislatures that have enacted small cell legislation streamlining the um, deployment of 5G small cells, including caps on fees. Now, I know that, uh, unfortunately, well, Michigan just passed that, and now it's in the hands of the governor. Many cities are opposed to these streamlining bills across the country because it is preempting their authority to regulate uh, what, what they see fit in their right of way as well as not charge market rate fees. And lawyer Mike Watsa, who I believe is here today, um, referred to this as a $10 billion annual giveaway to the telecommunications industry. I also wanted to note that Michigan, as I understand it, is the first state to get a third of the House to oppose the bill. Now, in California, when there was a streamlining bill, which did pass, it was vetoed um, by the governor. There was a broad coalition, over 300 cities, most of the counties opposed to this, this preemption of their authority. And Environmental Health Trust has posted all of the letters from doctors, Dr. Martin Paul's letter was mentioned, but there are letters from doctors internationally talking about the science and warning of the health effects should this legislation pass. Most notably, the firefighters were carved out of the bill, the firefighter stations. Now, California firefighters unions have long opposed antennas on their stations due to their concerns about health because of research that found neurological damage to firefighters when antennas were placed on their stations. And there's a CBS piece, which I really recommend. We also have a page on firefighters, and that's at the top. It's, it's well worth watching. They began opposing cell towers on fire stations after firefighters complained of health problems. These firefighters developed symptoms. Dr. Gunnar Heuser conducted a pilot study on firefighters at a station with cell towers. And the symptoms included problem with memory, problem with intermittent confusion, problem with weakness. Heuser says their brain scans suggest even low-level RF can cause cell damage. And he worries about more vulnerable groups like kids. So we found abnormal brain function in all of the firefighters we examined. So, following lobbying by firefighters, Cork and his co-author exempted fire stations from their bill, making them one place cell companies couldn't put a tower. This is the first piece of legislation that I think anyone's aware of where somebody got an exemption because they were concerned about health. Did they tell you at all about the all study? All I know is that when the firefighters ask, you know, I do what they ask me to do. Because they're strong lobbyists. Yes.
So if, say, school teachers and parents had a strong lobby and they asked you to pass something that would prevent these from going up in your schools, would you do that? If I couldn't get the votes any other way. In counties, it's really not beneficial to our health nor financially. I want to point out that, uh, that if there is not a streamlining bill in place, municipalities can and are passing policies to protect their community and maintain their authority. Federal preemption has been exaggerated, as happened in our county of Montgomery County, which you can go online and read all about, but uh, the, the council was told that they had to do certain things when actually they didn't. Um, federal law does not prohibit imposing strict procedural requirements. And I just have some examples of the many local ordinances moving forward. Uh, Burlington has annual recertification fees and requires extensive documentation to get a permit to put a small cell up. And I hear that Verizon walked away after this policy was put in place. Petaluma has a 200-foot setback from antennas to homes and mandates 1,500 feet between installations. And Fairfax and Mill Valley prohibit small cells in residential zones. And Fairfax is going to study the um, installation of a fiber optic cable network. And there is so much more uh, to talk about. We have the largest database on international and United States policy at Environmental Health Trust. We have a, a monthly newsletter. And what I would add is that, is that in other countries, there are um, bans on, on Wi-Fi in schools, certainly for nursery schools. There's a ban on advertising to children. And I thank you very much.